here we're taking a look at an array again and accessing it and for both input and output to the array, getting data in and out of the array in a couple different ways. I'm going to write a little program that prompts the user to input um, the miles driven per day, say for weeks. So an array is seven pieces of data we need one to keep Monday to uh, Sunday there. All right, so simple thing of integer values, rounded values, I think we'll work with. We'll just call it miles because it's a collection of miles. We need seven pieces of data for the complete week. All right, and there we have it. So now I'm just going to prompt the user um, to enter that data. All right, seven miles driven. Well, I mean, the miles driven for seven days. All right, and then what is C in? So like I was using the C out, I can use that to tell them you get the data from the first one and place it in the first one. Right? And each one of these is going to be the same. So this C in will stop, get one value from the user, place it in the index zero location. Right? And then this one will stop, put it in the number one location, which is actually the second element, number two element, which is actually the third piece of data. Right, and so forth here. So I'm going to change these. Right, so this is four. Right, that's five. And that's going to be six. And that's seven pieces of data. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Zero to six are the valid um, indexes that we can use. So that will sit there waiting seven times for inputs. And I can now do it, same thing. Once I have them in, I'm just going to output them on the screen. Right. And we'll start with uh, something telling us what this is. Right, which is the miles entered. Alright, so I'll change all these C ins to C outs. Got to change the operator to go the other way. All right, for output, All right, so the first seven lines up there are getting input from the user. We're accessing each individual piece and sticking data into the array as we're populating it. And then I'm going to put on just an end line so each of these are on each of a separate line. You can see it is pretty easy to use the array in terms of getting data in and out of it. It's just remembering that it starts at zero right, and goes up from there. Right. The highest index possible is one minus the size of the array. All right, so let's just run this. You'll see that it'll stop for seven days or seven times, right? Getting the mileage. All right, and we'll expand on this little simple program in a minute. So let's say. 10, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and 45. Right? And there you see the f seven values I just typed in listed again, using the array as to get the data out of it. Right? So it is very simple to put data in, take data out of the array. Of course, we can use these in equations. We can use them any other way that we can use a single integer value as we'll see in other examples. So let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so here we got a seven that's hard coded. All right, I don't like that with my arrays and I strongly suggest using constant variables. In this case, miles size, right? Meaning how many, the size of the array that I want. And I forgot my int in front of that. So let's put that in front, there we go. So I'm declaring a global variable called mile size, which is set to seven. So now I could take this, right, put it right there. Right, nothing has changed. I can compile this and run it again. You'll see I get the same results. Right, but I'm going to skip that step right now and expand on that a little bit more. So rather than doing seven individual CN statements, and if this was an array of 100, you would have to have 100 CN statements. We can easily do this within for loop. 
starting at zero because that's where our indexing starts. Right, the variable name does not matter, of course, as long as it's less than our max size. Right, we know there's seven items, so we go zero through six up to the seven here. So we're using that constant uh, in multiple places now. All right. So now all I have to do is write the C in miles. And instead of being a hard-coded value, I can use the variable, which will be constantly changing each pass of the loop. The index starts at zero, which would be the same as this statement. Then index goes to one, so it's the same as this statement. Then it goes to two, so it's the same as that statement, and so forth. So now I can comment these out. And I can do a similar thing down here, except obviously I'm doing the output now. Again, using that constant, right? Simplifying my code, right? Far less lines of code I had to write. Comment that out now. All right, and here we're doing outputs. So this is C out. Going the other way. And the end out. And I haven't changed anything. This should perform the same way as the previous program did, as we'll see. All right there, it is. It's prompting us to enter seven days: All right, 10, 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60. All right there, you go. There's the same seven values. Nothing's changed. So it's nice to use that constant in these loops. And just a quick thing that we'll, other thing we can do. We're going to output the average of the miles. So what's the average? Right, we need a total going right, of all the miles. So again, we can do uh, int total miles. And we'll set that equal to a zero and keep a running total going. All right, again, using this wonderful loop here. So before I do that C out, we got to get the total. All right, miles. Instead of doing output, though, we're going to take total miles and add to it the value that's in the array at that current index location. So that will sit there seven times, getting the values out of the array and adding them up. Now I could do, I can output the total on line, one line. Let's do that. Total miles. And then I'm going to do the average of it. And that's simply dividing by mile size. Right, so again, using that constant. Now if I wanted to do 8, right, I can change this one location to an 8. And now it's an array of 8. And this loop will go 8 times. Obviously this is not valid. But I can always do that with that variable also. Right? But well, all this will still work if I change the array size. So this will now output the average. Also, nice and simple to do. All right. And there we go, prompting us quickly to enter some values. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. All right, so there's the values again. There's the total of 280 divided by 7 gives you an average of 40. All right, so there you go. Um, if you really want this to be a decimal value on the average, you can always cast this one of the two of the division to a double. All right, or you can use the uh, interpreted cast. Either the cast will work. And then you'll see a decimal place pop up if there is a decimal value when it does a division.